for under discussion item 7.5 board training i wanted to get a sense around the idea of board training and whether or not we want to be looking to pursue um getting some additional board training lined up and just kind of talk about a timeline for that okay good idea um any other adjustments Um, do we have any public comment tonight? Um, act to approve the minutes of Monday, December 21st. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, so moved. Uh, Jamie. How are you all doing? We survived our second virtual wagon wheel and hopefully it went a little smoother. I think it was a little better, but good. You can say yes. I thought it was too. So I think we got the timing a little better on this one. Um, and so uh, busy time, as you know, across the SU. You all should have been copied. Um, I like to copy my staff correspondence um, with all of you. So you should have been blind copied on some letters I put out to the faculty and staff today, just to keep you in the loop on all the happenings occurring. Um, we uh, I'm, would like to say that we were successfully able to approve um, four budgets, uh, five if you count the SU budget here over the last few weeks. So. Certainly, we've been in the thick of the budget season. Uh, next up is Rochester Stockbridge and Granville Hancock. Um, and I look forward to getting all the materials finalized for RUD. All the materials went off for Strafford today um, and it's looking really good. So I'm feeling really optimistic about where we're at in the process. And uh, sort of all of a sudden, I felt a little relief come over my shoulders last week in regards to getting a bunch of that taken care of. I feel like since I've been on with you, all you've heard me talk about is budgets because we still had several to get approved um, last July 1st. So anyways, I feel like we're headed in the right direction. The staff and teachers, administration are working uh, really hard to best meet all of our students' needs and um, make certain we're doing a really good job in person and virtual. Um, I addressed COVID-19 in my letter to faculty and staff today. Um, and just gave them an update in regards to uh, where vaccine may be for educators and things of that nature. Um, and just to give the board an update in regards to that, my sense really is from um, listening to Secretary French about a week and a half ago, is that Vermont in general is disappointed with the rollout around vaccine um, and how readily available it has been. And so therefore that's what's delayed educators receiving vaccine. Um, and vaccinations. And my sense is until they feel like we have enough readily available, they're not ready to lump educators in at this point because they wouldn't have enough to actually manage it. So that's my sentiment around it. Um, that's a little bit me reading between the lines, but certainly he talked about how disappointed um, that you know they are right now with the timeline around the rollout. Um, but it also, also emphasizing again that schools really are, when you look at data points, safe places, and transmission rates across the state remain very um, low as compared to transmission rates in the actual general community, where they continue to see transmission much more, much higher um, is in the general community at this time. And I got to say, our family staff have been awesome with working with us around our health procedures and screeners. Um, you know, again, we have been able to stop any type of in-school exposure or transmission um, other than the um, exposure and transmission that we had in uh, Rochester Stockbridge. Um, and so, you know, we've been able to really navigate this across the SU. And I, I just got to say, I'm, I met with my team of nurses today in Shane Oaks, um, and they're just doing tremendous work. Um, and they're united and they're doing really good work together. And um, I'm just, I'm really proud of the effort across the SU. And I'll take any questions folks have. It's a busy agenda. And if there are none, I am gonna scoot out and be right back. 
that's okay with folks. Okay. All right. All right. Business manager's report. Good evening, everyone. I sent you my report previous to the board meeting. So if you have any questions, I'll happily answer them. But otherwise, I will go right to the revenue and expenditure projections. If Ray, you want to put that up on the screen? Thank you, Ray. So on the revenue side of the projections, I've updated to add the COVID reimbursement, which matches the updated COVID expenditure on the second page. That's the only change I made on the revenue side. Ray, if you can go to the second page, please. So on the second page, I've updated the COVID cost and then I have updated the health insurance based on enrollment and updated those projections. So that's looking better. And then I also updated the salary and benefit savings based on additional resignations that we have received. So there's some change there. So overall, we are now looking to have a projected surplus in the supervisory union of $30,240. Any questions on that? Tara, just clarification, is this um, COVID money, is this reimbursements that have come in from the federal government? Is that the idea? Yeah, that's the projected that we're hoping to get with the oh, CRF we're still hoping. reimbursements. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was curious if this was hoping still to yeah, get. It's still, all that's still in the works. We've gotcha. been guaranteed what we applied for. So it's just a matter of getting all the paperwork together and getting it into the AOE. And they continuously change how they want that to look. So we have to change it as they request it. That's great. Thank you. So back in your December meeting, I had sent the annual financial management questionnaire for you all to see if there was any questions on that, I can anticipate answering them for you. And if you're all set with that, then I just need Kathy as the supervisory union board chair to sign that form. And since you're here, Kathy, um, I have it on my desk if it's accepted by the board and you can sign it for me. We have to keep this on file. It's a requirement that we do it every year. Okay. Do we need to make a motion to accept that, Tara? Yes, please. So moved. Seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Thank you all. Kathy, I'll bring it down to you before we leave tonight. Okay. Thanks, Tara. Yeah. So then as far as the next discussion item I had on my report was the status of the fiscal year 22 budgets, meetings, and mailers. Um, as Jamie indicated, Strafford's mailer documents went out from me earlier this evening to Nellie at the town. So I've asked her if she has any additional questions, concerns to let me know. The next one that we are working on is RUDS. And we're hoping to get that all done and out no later than the end of the week to the publishers so we can get that out to all your registered voters. Um, once you all have your warnings in your informational meeting notice agenda signed. I will need those back um, in the signed version after your clerk has signed them to include in the book. So if you can make sure that gets to me, that would be fantastic. And then the next up um, will be getting final budgets done for Rochester Stockbridge and Granville Hancock. Tara, when do you need the, um, the informational meeting agenda thing? Sign. You'll need to sign that all at the same time, Sarah, so that it can get to Lisa as well and into the book. 
So can we get a copy that takes those times out or can I manipulate it to take the times out? Yeah, I can send one. Revise yeah, if one you one. guys did that tonight, Sarah, we can just send you a copy with those. Well, we didn't really because I didn't think we had to move on it. But we have three people, so we could do it. We could we could do it somehow. I would imagine. I mean, we moved on the warrant, and we moved on um, the whatever else we had to do. Oh, the minutes. So it seems like you should be okay just to have the times correctly on the warning. Yeah. It, well, then it's not the, it's not the, it's the warning for the informational meeting. Yeah. So you just need to make sure they're right on the paperwork that goes out. Well, we, I don't, we don't want them on it at all. Well, we want the 10 to 12, but they, they broke it down like 10, 10 05. And we don't want that. We did talk about that. All right. Well then we, yeah, we'll get that fixed. Yeah, okay. I'll go in and delete them, Sarah, and get them emailed back out. Okay, thanks. Yeah, because ours was approved as amended as well. So Lisa McCrory has all of the really specific notes for Rudd. And I can send that. Um, where do you want me to send those amended um, versions? So I can do that If you tonight. can send them to Tara, that'd be great. Okay, I'll do that. All right. Any other questions for Tara? Anything else for you, Tara? Yes. So I have two more things. The next item on my business manager's report was we were approached, when I say we, we, Ray and I, were approached by Spyglass, who is a vendor that reviews your telecommunication invoicing and contracts and tries to find means of savings for you. And if they are successful, then they get a portion of the savings as their payment. So I just need to know if that is something that you all are interested in us pursuing on behalf of your mem each of your districts and also on behalf of the supervisory union. Just to, you just need to look to address this tonight. This is sort of yeah. an overview. I see you, Carl. Go ahead, Don. Uh, what do we have to give up as far as passwords and things for that? And what, what's our um, liability if we give that information out? We don't give any passwords. We authorize them through a letter of authorization to access our accounts with the vendors and they will review the billing and then they request um, specific reports that help identify usage on the individual phone lines and anticipate if the contract matches usage and utilization. Carl? Um, so this sounds like, uh, that group that we worked with a few years ago, um, or that, that, that was going to come in and, and help us with our, our Medicaid, our, our Medicaid coding and billing so that we, we, we increased our reimbursements and, you know, their deal was they got a percentage of whatever, whatever we got. So in that sense, it's fine. What I would like to, un to, to have a clear understanding of before we start investigating this, are we really uh, maximizing our E-rate reimbursements? Because that's that's an area that is, you know, something that in in the past we it's not been, uh, you know, we, it's something we haven't been been complete on. And I think before we start looking for, you know, new ponds to throw a fishing line into, making sure that we've, uh, 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 you know, gotten all the all the stuff uh, that we're already you know, getting uh, squared away. Is our E-rate squared away? So uh, this is Ray. Um, Carl, there is no reimbursement in this area for E-rate anymore. Those that had gone down over the past six or seven years by 20% a year, and they, right. they don't reimburse for phone service anymore. Okay, but they but we, we are maximizing this stuff because they reimburse now. It's all about like access points and, 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 and Wi-Fi coverage and... And, and, and those pieces and we're, we're capturing all those all those savings we will it doesn't happen every year yeah so Tara I think it would be great is it one of those things that um, you can do per district so the district can decide or is it have yeah. to be all or none because I'm just thinking with 
having a merge district, it might be great just to have a review of, to make sure, you know, things are being charged equally across the two buildings. I mean, that might be really good research to do. Like if we're paying higher on the phone bill because it's in Chelsea versus being in Tunbridge, maybe that's something, do they, is that kind of what they look at? Yep. Okay, so maybe I would like to see it on the FBUD agenda. Okay. Probably on the R side agenda, for example. R exactly well. as well. Yep. Put it on our Stratford's too, please. And I think just as a whole, you would need to agree to do it for the supervisor union. If we decided to do yep. it okay, at the supervisor yep. union level. Okay. All right. Anything else, Tara? Uh, my last thing, I have two resignations in the business office that I just needed to notify you both of. Um, Ann Simone and Robin Dunnikin have both resigned from their positions. Okay. And they were both in payroll, just so folks know. Um, and um, Jason and Tara's team have done a terrific job of stepping up uh, with us not having a payroll clerk to ensure that payroll continued to be put out bi-weekly here over the last month and accurate. So I got to say they've done an, a really remarkable job. Um, yeah, Jason didn't miss a beat. He stepped right up and took do over. We need, do we need to have those resignations accepted, Jamie? Yep, that's per your policy. So can I get a motion? This is Lisa Floyd. I'd make a motion that we accept those resignations. <clears throat> Carl Grappi, second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any nay? Tara, sorry, Tara, could you give me those names again for the minutes? Anne Simone. Yep. And Robin Dunnikin. Thank you. D U N I C A N. Got it. Thank you. Is this, is this something we accept with regret or not? Yeah. Absolutely. Could you mark that for the minutes with regret? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Got it. Thanks. Thank you. That's all I have, unless there's any questions. Any more questions for Tara? Uh, this is Don. What's the status of the um, the end of year reviews? Have they all been completed? The audits are projected to be completed by the second week of February for all the member districts. They have completed the supervisory union. They're on the second draft of RUDs, and we got sent um, – a few questions on our suds tonight that we are wrapping up and then we should have our suds draft next. Okay. All right. Anything else for Tara? Tara, you're going to review your projected, your revenue and expense projections. Or did you do that while I walked out? Already did it. Oh, sorry guys. Well, I hope you saw that. It's good news. The SU was moving toward the black. Nice. Uh, technology director. Hello, everybody. You have my report uh, mentioning a assessment and uh, copier contracts in this case and a, uh, a phone service wholesaler. So Tara and I were working on two different angles of this uh, same thing relating to phone service. And in addition to that, we're both uh, working on, there are 11 copiers across the SU that are up for replacement this summer. And um, there's a company that comes re well recommended as a copier broker that um, we believe will provide us with at least the same level of service and be able to save a fair amount of money. So we're investigating that. Nice work. Any questions for Ray? Uh, this is Don. I just see that that Pixlot camera can um, broadcast events at the gyms. 
So they we could hold the meetings at the gym and we could broadcast it and hold a town meeting. Is that how I understand? That's only that's for the high school gym at. So that's South only for high schools. Okay. It is. Right? Uh, that's a VPA program that was uh, the upfront cost was covered by their uh, athletic boosters, I think. But uh, the VPA wants it to be at a place where there's uh, high school games being played. It's not. It's something they've done for a couple of years, but this year they're promoting it more. Ray, I have a question about the copiers. Sure, Bob. You have a you have, you have eleven copiers that you're thinking about replacing. Eleven that come off lease this uh, July one. Yep. Um, when I was uh, principal at Fairhaven, uh, on some of the copiers, uh, instead of going out for lease with another one, uh, I bought them out and uh, owned a copier for probably three years without putting anything into them yep. and, saved, and saved the lease payment. I also negotiated really hard on the price per copy or the number of copies. Yep. And um, there's a lot of money made in copiers, and you really need to negotiate hard with them. Right. So um, I don't have uh, firm numbers yet, but uh, this company thinks we do about 3 million copies a year across the SU. And the, the bid that we would be a part of would be for 50 million copies. So whatever that works out to, we would be in a pool, you know, 10 times the size of what we would uh, draw on our own. So that's that's the point is that um, they put out the bid to everyone in the copy business. And because they do such a large aggregated volume that they get better prices. Well, it's, I found that it's something that you really have to look at really closely. Yeah, and that's that's what this is coming from. And I would consider I would con, I would consider buying out some of those leases and keeping the machines with no expense. But. Yep, um, and so that would be an option um, if we went with this company um we can do it with what we have now all of all of our current copiers are through canon um but the way that lease works is it's not not worth buying it for what it would cost at the time meaning you've already used it up and it's uh, not really worth what they would offer it to you for because they, they charge you less on the lease by giving you more residual value at the end. Everything's negotiable. Just because, you know, they say this is what we'll offer doesn't mean that's what you accept. Sure, I, I, I understand. I mean, there's a lot of money in copiers, right? I mean, I'll give you an example. My first year at Fairhaven, I got an excess bill of $30,000. For copies, yep. and I negotiated that all away. So everything's negotiated. They have, they make a lot of money on this stuff. It's not it's not free. No, I understand. All the copiers we have today and now are based on state uh, contracts, right? And this company yep. thinks they can do better than the state of Vermont, so that's why we're looking at them to save money on both the capital cost and the Print cost. All right, keep us posted, Ray. Yep. Any other questions for Ray? Ray, I have a question about the outdoor public wireless access points. Um, are those firewalled or are there some services that are blocked or can anybody from the public just turn up and do whatever they want? Is there, are they password protected? Um, 
they're not, but they they run through. They run separate from the school network, but based on the filtering that's already there. Okay, so there's no way to access anything on the school networks from these public access points because they're on their own. They would be on their own network. It's on its own network, riding on along. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I know. Way, I don't mean like yeah. Um, and I guess my my initial question was like. Can they access some of the like? Could they have access? Could they access Parlor and being like uploading hate video? Like, is everything wide open, or are there some? No, it it, it would be it's subject to the same filtering okay. that the school has. Okay, I don't know what the school has. Um, they have uh, uh, varies by building. Yeah. They have what's required, which is uh, SEPA compliant filters. Okay to the level of things harmful to minors. Got it. Okay, perfect. That's good news. Thank you. All right. Anything else for Ray before we... All right. Director of Student Support Services. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, hey, you have my report. I'm, I'm a little light this, uh, this month uh, to report out on. But a couple of things I want to bring your attention to is the uh, time study. So we're in our conducting our uh, second of uh, two man, uh, mandated weeks of time schedules. That'll happen on February fifteenth. Um, and I was everybody able to access that link to that memo. Yeah. Anyways, uh, that'll be going out uh, this coming week, or uh, sometimes uh, Tracy Inglehart and I will be sending that out. Um, the second thing is that I put on that what we're trying to do throughout the district is uh, looking at all our out of district uh, state uh, out of district place kiddos uh, in various programs uh, and seeing which one of these uh, these kids that we can bring back to our district um, to educate. Um, ho hopefully, quite a few. We're looking at a program at the high school level, uh, you know, 12 to 15 students looking at infrastructure. Um, and also trying to build a you know filtering system of what what kids are ready to come back and what will what we what will we need to support those guys. Nice. What this is Don uh, Don? What parameters are you using to make those determinations? Are you well, well, we're we're going to start by. Uh, looking at IEPs, evaluations, and psychological reports. And we're going to look at behavioral data and educational data from our uh, receiving uh, schools or, and, and kind of uh, build on saying, what, why are those kids there, first of all? Why, what happened to get, uh, create those kids to be sent to another school district or program? Um, and then from there, we'll, we'll start generating questions. What are the needs to support these children to come back to our, pro our schools? Their schools. Well, it's going to be our district. Yeah, but we're bringing them back to their respective schools, hopefully. Well, it, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to be, it, it'll be a high school program, so it'll come to the South Royalton School, high school. Okay. What are we, what's I the, hmm? sorry, uh, ahead, what's the determining factor if they're ascending school and they choose not to go to South Rolton? Well, that's a good question, Don. You know, I, I think we have to take that all into consideration, uh, but really looking at uh, what is the IEP team going to determine? Mm -hmm. Can we meet that child's needs? in the South Royalton High School, and as an IEP team, make that call. But it wouldn't affect, so I, I just want to follow up to that. It wouldn't affect, we have choice, so, Tom, so first branch uh, has choice. So the, let's say we have a student in a choice town that selects a high school, and then the IEP team says we can't meet their needs at the high school. They're no longer attending that high school. That IEP team would place them in a more restrictive learning environment that's managed by your supervisory union because we oversee them still as the LEA. So the idea would be as if we could meet them in a less restrictive environment, 
here within the supervisory union, the IEP, IEP team could determine that the less restrictive learning environment indeed could be the Wildcat Institute, which is held within your supervisory union. So this would not be a student who's accessing a choice high school within that high school, right? And just functioning with supports. This would be that IEP team of which you're part, you're the LEA has made a determination that they need to go into a more intensive setting like EVA, Choice Academy, um, the new Maple school, Hill, Maple Hill, things of that nature. So they're not actually located at a high school. They're located at an alternative school. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I didn't I didn't bring that into the conversation earlier. Uh, but again, it's more of a, a, a step down from a more restrictive environment. So the Wildcat Institute would be that step down uh, and then integrate those kids as best we can into the uh, general population or general classrooms at uh, uh, the South Rutherland High School, if that's appropriate. Megan, you had a question? Yeah, I was just going to ask down if you had any, um, now that makes a little more sense that they're coming into the general population, but any like programs or things you were particularly excited about welcoming these kids back to? Like, do we have any anything exciting going on that we're going to bring them into? Like uh, career and technical stuff or outdoor stuff or anything like that? Yeah, that's 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 all on the table. That's what this uh, committee's uh, starting to look at. What do we need? I have a school psychologist, uh, PhD level is going to be working with us uh, to say, okay, what what's going to hook these guys and gals uh, to come back in, and what do we need for an infrastructure to support each of these these kids, these children to come back? Uh, whether that's uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to need uh, some kind of therapeutic wraparound services as a like a school counselor or a therapist. Um, and again, building those programs is going to uh, you know, meet the needs of kids that uh, whether it's uh, academics and or uh, uh, tech program, uh, just to kind of look at that and explore that because a lot of our these our students uh, learn hands on. You know, we can embed those uh, academics into the hands-on experiences. Jamie? Yeah, and I'll just add, I mean, so what we've done is, is RUD, since they're hosting, has budgeted accordingly to have mainstream teachers push in to service these students, because these students would be White River Unified District students, right, that are placed there with that level of support. And so the idea would be that these students are not just housed in a program all day, but there's a continuum, it's programming. So they're accessing certain courses in the mainstream, but then also they have a place to go back to um, to get courses and more intensive interventions and academic supports if needed. As we know, when you, it's about looking at each student's individual student profile, right? So we need to look at their learner profile and the idea is that we're gonna personalize programming to each student. It's not going to be a one-size-fit-all approach. Don? I don't know if there's any of that data left, but a few years ago, Rochester High School had designs to start an outdoor program over in the, in the uh, park over there. So that may be something that the powers that be could look at. Yeah, and I, I, again, I think that the, the task of our group uh, is to really look at individuals. Uh, and again, there's no magic going on in these uh, schools that we're sending for a lot of money uh, to educate these, these youngsters. I think that we can, we can rep uh, uh, replicate that and expand on it to improve, and we'll have more control and oversight of their, their academics and, and raise the bar higher. Um, I mean, I, I gave a couple kids a ride, ride home the uh, last week that uh, coming from EVA and very engaging kids, uh, youngsters. And uh, I said, I don't, I don't know why these guys are not in our schools. Now I don't know the backstory. You know, I'll learn the backstory. But um, I, I felt that uh, they were polite, inter, you know, entertaining at times, uh, but. Uh, you know, there are kids. We ought, to, we ought to kind of bring them back or try to anyway. Don, you have your hand up. Did you have another comment? Or are you good? Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Don, I'm wondering if there's 
Anybody you think we can't move back um, or couldn't, if there are any circumstances that are, you think would be beyond our abilities within RSU? Yes, and I, and I, I told our team uh, that was one of the mistakes we made when I, we started in Barrie, where we really didn't put some good filters on, you know, how we looked at children. Um, there are students out there, and I'm sure they're in our communities that have some mental health issues that we are not equipped to to help, you know, as as people as as a program, and that they're in programs uh, that have that wraparound service and more of mental health uh, capacity than we can provide. So that is one of the big red flags I'd say to our team is to really, really analyze, you know, what is the mental health issues that uh, that are exist. Thanks. Anybody got any questions for Don? All right, thank you, Don. Yeah, and I, again, I'll keep you posted as we move forward. And um, I mean, it's 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 quite an endeavor, uh, but uh, I think it's a doable one. So sounds exciting. Yeah, um, it really is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Curriculum instruction and assessment. Oh, Kathy, Don. Kathy, sorry, I just had one other thing. Don, you. are you going to access Dr. Ketterer? I thought he had some designs on how to do a high school section as well. Uh, no, not at this time. We're going to entertain uh, bringing Bill Ketterer back. Uh, and again, we we're moving in a direction where it's more of an ABA uh, type deal and not, uh, you know, everything's a relationship. But uh, again. Um, it's a different philosophy. Um, nothing that I'm not, you know, Bill Ketterer has, Dr. Ketterer is a strong advocate for kids and he's well liked and, and, but I think there's a different direction that we want to go in. Okay. Just so folks know, ABA is applied behavioral analysis. So the idea is that we'll couple the therapeutic approach with providing the teachers and students tools within the moment of how to you know better regulate and or navigate when conflict arises all right um curriculum instruction and assessment all right so um as you can see from the report um i have uh listed on there kind of some of the feedback that we received from teachers as we looked back at our december 21st and 22nd uh, learning experience together. So I would like to first um, just quickly look at goal one, which, you know, for students includes um, encouraging a relevant and rigorous learning environment. And we certainly want to provide that for teachers too. So as you can see, we had 88% uh, rated at thir three, uh, level three or four. Um, teachers like the variety, the immediate usability, they appreciated uh, the superintendent's uh, comments, as well as uh, the building-based offerings that many of our principals offered. So we had a really um, great mix as far as um, the opportunities that were available to all the staff. And um, in addition to that, uh, you know, we also always have some uh, growth points. And as with any innovation, um, there's going to be things that we're going to learn from trying something hard. So. Um, I, I think we can point to um, just trying to coordinate across multiple offerings, uh, which we had, and doing that on a virtual platform. We had a little bit of a learning curve there on uh, the, the caps on number of Zoom uh, participants and, and so on. So um, something that I feel uh, sure we can overcome next time. You can see more specific teacher feedback on the back uh, second page. Um, in addition to that, as we look at goal two, as Ray mentioned, um, our star window is open until Friday. We're gathering some new outcome, outcomes from students. Charlie's been working hard um, on PBL at the middle school and high school, as well as in the alternative classroom. So he's been doing some heavy lifting there. And as you see, he also had a, a session uh, during our in-service time. Um, as it relates to goal three, uh, we have uh, done two out of our three days of our work uh, for additional training in LLI in the upper grades. So this would uh, focus on the learning uh, for our, as a part of our menu of supports in grades three through six. 
Um, as many of you may realize, LLI um, does connect with our universal approach and would be sort of our first go-to if a child is showing within their STAR or benchmark results that they're struggling. So um, that's uh, kind of what we're trying to build there. And interventionists are doing a great job of teaming with teachers around that results, really uh, creating that interdependent system we're trying to build. Are there any questions? All right. Charlie, you have anything to add? Charlie's with us tonight, too. I don't have anything to add. I think Amy covered it quite well. All right. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. So we're on to discussion items 1920 WRBSU audit. Tara, are you with us? Will you highlight? Um, the audit and talk to them about why we need to delay until next month to approve it. And um, I did send it all to you in the confidential document email that I sent out. Um, and those numbers we expect to be very solid, just so you know. Um, we really do see that as a final draft, but Tara can explain to you why we can't formally adopt it tonight. So until all of the member districts audits are done in case there's any, any adjusting journal entries that need to occur or any changes that need to occur as a result of each of the member districts, we just have to hold off to accept the supervisory reunion until they are all complete, which again, as I indicated earlier, is anticipated to be the second week of February. Which really isn't that far away now. Nice. Right, any discussion, guys? Tara, will you highlight you? Uh, I included for you your you address some questions that you needed to address within the findings of the audit. Can you just yeah. give an overview of the different systems and procedures we've put in place to address some of those areas? Absolutely. So the several of the findings that were in the audit were items that we had already addressed as a result of. Um, reviewing the financial practices and procedures that we had here at the supervisory union when Jamie came on board and the changes that we were making. One of them um, being in our grants that I'm now being more involved in overseeing uh, the processes and procedures on the grants, which includes the periodic uh, time studies that are required when salary positions are paid for through federal funds. So that was one of the, the findings that we had already adjusted prior to even receiving it in the audit. The other um, was really solidifying our procurement process in using funds that are paid for with federal or using federal dollars to pay for expenditures and purchases. There is a very specific federal procurement policy that we needed to adjust our processes for to match. So we had already done that as well. So the findings that were brought forth were already items that we had identified as issues and had corrected. And so my responses to them were, we had already corrected this action. All right. And you all received a copy of what I sent to the auditors. All right, any other discussion? All right, so we'll be on next month's agenda to accept, hopefully. No, not until February, right? Well, next month is February. Next month is February. Wow. Only okay. a few days <laughs> left in January. So that will be another full board or the executive board? That would be full, Don. At the end of the month, yep. All right, perfect. Thank you, guys. Um, COA hire and hiring and timeline. What is that, Jamie? Well, I should have said CAO, I guess. But I messed that up. <laughs> so as the chief academic officer, hiring and timeline. Um, and so the job um, ag closed on Friday. Uh, we did, as I had in indicated in some uh, board reports, we did repost to um, secure some additional candidates. And um, now... Ray, who's here tonight, he is one of the co-facilitators with Andrew Bowen um, from the admin level. And then we have community members 
um, representing uh, that committee, students, teachers, and support staff. Did I miss anything, Ray? I think I got them all. So we got a pretty good stakeholder group across the SU. They will call through the um, applications and do interviews. Uh, the timeline that we set out would be that they would send two finalists um, to then interview with me. Um, and then I will recommend a CAO um, candidate to the board um, after we, you know, we've gone through uh, reference checks and everything of that nature. So I laid that out in your board reports back in December with the plan being that we might be coming with you with a candidate tonight. So we're delayed one month. Um, but like I said, I do feel really good about the quality of candidates that we have um, in the application pool. And Ray, do you want to talk about how many stakeholders were within that group? Uh, I got to look to get specifics, but we have somebody from every every operating district. Just roughly like 10 or 15? That sounded like a nice set of people. Good job. Yeah, no, it's not 15. Uh, Closer to 10. I'll get you a more exact number. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Part of my plan, just so you know, would be during the second round interviews is that we would um, have community forum as part of that interview process with me to allow other stakeholders to join. Um, we've gotten really good about holding these virtual forums, so I think it would be important to open up a forum that way um and have them give a brief presentation and so that would be part of the interview process as well just so you know um jamie will they inter in did you say interview with us next month or not yes my goal would be f in february and that's part of why that would be a full board meeting as well very good all right any other discussion for this topic All right, WRVSU for food service 21-22. So we would like to bring forth the concept of centralizing the White River Valley Food Service to the supervisory union. And there's some reasons behind that. I know we have talked about it you know, in the past. Um, by statute, we are supposed to be one school food authority and by utilizing one food school food authority, it gives us the ability to use staff strengths throughout the supervisory union and work more cohesive as a team, which we have come very far in the last year and a half um, developing and building the food service team. And with Bill joining us this year, um, being through the summer food service program has really helped bring that sharing efficiencies and utilizations throughout um, each of our individual buildings, which has been fantastic. And I'd like to continue to build on that. It also gives us the opportunity to move staff around if necessary. I know we'd had a shortage in one of our districts this year in food service and to have had the ability to move people around, similar to how we do in special education would be a great asset also to food service. And then as we build and strengthen the food service program, it would give us more opportunity to meet our requirements under federal procurement and have uh, the procurement being done at the supervisory union level. Right now, the way it works, as you're all familiar with, is each individual district has their own food service program. The expenditures are paid through the individual districts and then you get reimbursed through the supervisory union once we get reimbursed through the state and the feds for the reimbursement amounts. So it's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot of money back and forth. And just to clean up that process, the auditors also highly recommend it. In addition to, like I said, it is state statute that we have one enterprise fund for the entire school food authority. So that's the methodology as to why we would like to centralize food service. The, the other, and we're not looking for you to do take action on this tonight. We're putting it out there for thoughts and questions, and then to bring it forward for a possible action in February. Um, the other thing is, is that what we realized is, is that as we look to create more interdependence, our cooks really all have different strengths. Like some of them are really into menu planning, and some of them are really good around 
grant writing. And some of them are really good in regards to um, purchasing. And so the idea too would be that we would look at SU wide menu planning that they do together and that we do bulk purchasing. Um, as you know, personnel side of this is what's driving the cost right now in food service. Um, so what we can control is, is our purchasing and how do we try to get more kids to eat and how do we try to get our numbers up? And so that's what the focus really would be on is in regards to menu planning, getting more excitement and trying to do more bulk purchasing um, because we have consistent menus. So we're buying the same food and supplies, um, you know, for menu planning week to week. So Don, your hand was up first. So Jamie, explain to me how personnel is a driving factor. I mean, we're all in one bargaining unit now. We're all paying the Just same. the cost everybody. of personnel. The cost of personnel. When you look at your food service budget, personnel is the big driver to the cost of us running food service. So and this doesn't address that is my point. So the only way to save on personnel is to lower the numbers. Is that correct? Well, we'd look to try to find more efficiency there, um, certainly as we go through. But, you know, why part of why we're running deficits is just they are part of the master agreement. So their salary and benefits is such that the reimbursement rate, we just can't make up the difference. So, Jamie, are all food service programs in the bargain agreement in every school? They're not, are they? They're, the FBUD's not and Stratford's not. Right. They are everywhere else. And like Jamie was saying, Don, you know, one of the, so because salary and benefits are what they are, we need to find other efficiencies. So we find that in common planning, common purchasing, bulk purchasing, and utilizing the strengths of our food service staff. And also, you know, help with the paperwork because there are some food service staff that just despise the paperwork and there are others that, you know, excel at it. So to be able to have that, team approach to it will be fantastic. So uh, Carl, you had your hand up and then Ethan. Thank you, Kathy. Um, question one, I'm, it, it, it sounds to me, but I want to, I want to make sure I, I'm clarifying this. When we're talking about doing this right now, we are talking about still going, we're, we're not talking about bringing in like Aramark or Abbott. We are talking about hiring uh, like a, 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 a central food service director at the SU level and having them run a food service pro program like Ray runs technology? No, this is no. just bringing food service out from the individual districts under the supervisory union. I am your school food authority as your right. business manager okay. because we do we not, not have a We would not be recommending that we hire someone full time right. to oversee them. Yeah. So this just brings it out from the individual district enterprise fund level into an enterprise fund at the supervisory union. So, then so expenses have to, and revenue comes in and out of the supervisory union. They become employees of the supervisory union, just like special education works now. Right. So we would have to have an allocation formula, which I don't think it sounds like you, you're, you're ready to propose, and that's probably too detail-oriented for the conversation we're having tonight anyways. Um, my, but that my, my second concern is that one of the things, at least in our SUD, um, is that, you know, we integrate, I mean, we have community gardens, uh, at Stockbridge and I believe there's some at Rochester still. Um, we, you know, we've had historically, um, programs where we get kids involved in, in, in menu development in tasting foods in, uh, really integrating with foods. And we found that that really helps the way that our children eat. Um, and it becomes a linchpin of our wellness program. And I'm concerned that if we're gonna move this, you know, to, 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 to an SU level, will we still be able to have that same impact and that same curricular integration that we have with food and wellness in our, in our overall curriculum that we have today? Because that's, I, 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 I don't know that, I mean, I, I'd like to address our deficit certainly, but I don't know that I'm willing to at this point give that up for our kiddos to have to have a, a, a central a central office kind of making um, big decisions about menu planning that you know 
heretofore our kids were involved in the discussion with, and now it sounds like it's almost coming from from you know uh, exit three. We would not be the ones planning the menu. I'm certainly not a food service person. I'm not going to plan menus for your kids. That would still be the individual food service in your building. They would just work more as a team. So for an example, one of the items that we were talking about is, you know, if there's something that's really popular in one building and they have a high participation rate on that day of the menu when that's served, to bring that to the other schools and see if we can get an increase in participation on those days. As you indicated, we have some schools that are really good at the farm to school program. And then we have others that aren't utilizing that because they weren't eligible for the farm to school grant. They weren't awarded that. So their program may be less than other buildings. So to have that ability to work with that individual strength to build that farm to school program and to follow up with it, that gives us that flexibility to do that. And you're comfortable, well, I mean, you're comfortable that we can do that without adding, I mean, to, to, to me, I, I'm not necessarily against the idea of adding a, an SU wide food service director and getting the central food authority, uh, a position off your plate, um, and onto, onto to someone else's, but, um, you're, 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 you're pretty confident that we can do these things without overtaxing you even more and without hiring someone. The potential um, concept that we've been running through would be maybe that becomes a responsibility of someone within the SU office um, who's already currently in place and that's in addition to their position. I'm just not ready to roll that out yet. So it's, so we're basically at food for thought and we'll get some numbers. Well, yeah, and I mean, it's more to just get a general sense of whether or not the board even would entertain like a fully vetted proposal, right? Like I just wanted to have the initial discussion, gauge your interest and then come with you with a more full proposal. Like we have on other things that we've rolled out to you. Um, so and if, you, if it was, if folks said, no, Jamie, we really don't want you to change it. Then we'd let it be for now. But if folks wanted to find out more information, then we would put together a, a, a more, you know, a fully vetted proposal and then bring it to you would be the idea. All right, so Ethan. Um, yeah, I just saying, I, I like the idea. I think the teamwork idea is really great of the people. So instead of getting rid of people and having some centralized thing that it is a team of people working together, I think that's a great idea. I know Jamie's talked about that before, about us sharing resources around the SU. Um, um, but uh, obviously, you know, I'd like to see numbers. Um, you know, if, if it really can save some money and where, obviously we have big deficits in our food service and um uh but uh, i i'd want to see the numbers first to see if it's worth it because otherwise I, I i i hate to put anything more on you tara that's that's you know that you've got suddenly you're having to take all the phone calls from all the different food people all the time on top of everything else you're doing so that's that's my concern is that it's well plotted out how it's managed at the su level um but yeah numbers and that but i really like the teamwork idea Thank you. And I don't mean to speak for Tara Bill and Tara, feel free to correct me. I think what the what the boards don't realize now is that all that happens now currently, but the added work is all the subgranting that Tara has to do within the business office on top of it. Yes, that's the majority of it, but also the fact that we have eight different buildings doing things eight different ways. And to get consistency across the purchasing and the suppliers and the materials and inventory, getting all of that centralized should have an impact on our financials. Lisa, you had a question? Yeah, um, I, I think it was mostly answered um, when Carl shared. I really like the idea of building on the strengths of people that we already have in our system and finding efficiencies that we can find. Um, and I love what he was sharing about kids helping build the menu and the farm to table work that's been happening in their school district. That would be exciting, I think, to spread to other schools. Um, so I'm excited by those implications as well. I think that um, 
seeing the numbers would be great. I wonder if, I mean, I don't think we need to vote on this, but if we could just do like a thumbs up, thumbs sideways, thumbs down and see what the room thinks, um, that would be great. Thank you. Don? Yeah, I just, just had an observation. I, I think if we can all play to individual strengths, that would be terrific. However, in my experience being human nature, we all, if there's more people added, the water gets diluted rather than strengthened. So that's just something to be aware of and watch out for. All right, guys. So could, could we get a thumbs up if we want them to go ahead and get us some numbers and a little more detail of what this would look like? All right. Any thumbs down? Are we good? All right. Hey, Kathy, can I just add something? Sure. I, I was just going to say that our, I, I'm thanks to Carl for bringing up that issue about the, the local food because our Stratford program is really strong there. So I think that's my, I love everything you're saying, but my major concern is just about the hanging on to the, you know, there's homemade items and she's got a great relationship with the kids. So I want to make sure we can maintain that. Yeah, and I, and I want you all to know this, your food service folks are not surprised we're having this conversation either. We're not blindsiding them. They know that there's been talks about that. Um, and that most all your programs do have really strong, um, you know, farm to school components and others have a weak weaknesses in that area. And the hope would that, you know, I really see that as a value to our communities. I think our 10 towns really value agriculture and it's a part of root of who we are and fresh local produce. Um, so the hope would be to continue to grow that and foster it. Okay. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Next, uh, superintendent evaluation. So I spoke to Sue at the um, Vermont School Boards Association and the boards had not there was only a few board members that had responded to the survey. So she re, we redid a little bit more time to get more board members feedback. Um, I have not heard back from her or talked back to her about how many more supported. So I will touch base with her and we'll have that committee get together. Um, and hopefully they were working on, gonna work on writing up a report for us. So um, that's where I'm at with the superintendent evaluation. Have you heard anything else, Jamie? Okay. No, I just didn't want to lose track of it. So I figured yeah, I'd get so it on the agenda. Hopefully we put it back out. So hopefully I think she was going to give it till the 25th or I'm not sure what date she picked. I have to look at my notes, but we should have that report coming very shortly. Kathy, can you get from her for you uh, the names of the people who have or have responded? Um, I mean, I believe I did, but if so few people have done it, maybe we just didn't submit it right, you know, or so like we can just check to make sure. Right. I'll check back with her and find out if there's still a large number of people who didn't respond. And if, if she can give names so that like you could call me and say, Sarah, your name's on the list. And I can say, well, I didn't think it was was because I thought I did it, but maybe I forgot to submit it or something like right. that. You know? That's a really good idea. I think this is a tool that we really need to work on and we need to get board participation. So I think following up and making sure we had good participation is important. I also think it was easy to miss. This is Chantel. I completed it the, the on the last day that it, that we were able to the first deadline. And I just remember thinking to myself, oh, shoot, like I have to go back in and do that. So, it, you know, for whatever it's worth, you know, making sure to go look for it in your email to make sure that it's there and to make sure that you intentionally go and find it and complete it if you haven't. Right. And we sent that out a second round and I asked all the board chairs to make sure that they um, got to their board members. So hopefully they all did that. Um, board training. Yeah, so I just, you know, I've had multiple different board members talk to me about our onboarding process and it would be helpful in regards to getting an overall training for the board so we all have common language and approach. And so what I'd like to get a sense of if that's something that folks want to pursue of, yes, let's pursue it. And then I would go out and get more details and then bring it back to you next month. Um, I think that you've had different levels of training in the past. Um, and there was probably different approaches to it, maybe even in, in Windsor Northwest versus Orange Windsor to then WRVSU. 
I was thinking it made sense to try to have April be the target month originally because we have a bunch of new folks coming on typically after town meeting. But you know, now May is when I think we're going to have an onboarding of new members. So we may want to wait and do it in June potentially. I just felt like it would once we have all of our new members on board, um, that it would make sense that we all went through it. So we all have that common language approach in training. So I offer that as thoughts and then was just curious to what you guys were thinking, um, if that made sense or any comments. I mean, I think the sentiment is that it would be good for us. Um, I just felt like it made sense to do it once we have new folks onboarded and we all went through it. And then we would just have an annual training that we do um, every year because it just, I think our refreshener for everyone is helpful. So what are folks thoughts? I would put a thumbs up. I think it's a really good idea. I would put a thumbs up, but, but we'll have new board members coming on in early March and June is late. I mean, I know it's what the, um, VS uh, Vermont School Boards Association does. Uh, so it's, you know, or probably a bit earlier than that, but um, I just put that out. I think it's a great idea though. I don't think it hurts if the other local district boards who are reconfiguring in March want to approach it locally, Sarah, and then we still offer one SU wide um, later in the spring once the other four districts bring on their folks. I just felt like why do force you know why do a bunch of singletons if we can invite everybody here and do one big one but if local districts want to go ahead ahead of time that's fine too mm -hmm. all right guys can i get a thumbs up okay mika are you liking that idea okay any thumbs down i'm joking with mika because she's leaving us <laughs> all right guys so, Jamie, you'll get us some more information in our next meeting. Perfect. Um, Thank you all. That's exciting. Jamie, do we need to talk about payroll anymore tonight? No? We're good? Um, executive session for negotiations. Well, this is for negotiations if you guys want to go to. You all just had um, executive sessions on negotiations. You can choose to move into it as a full board if you'd like or you can look to discuss and take action on the contract. That's up to you guys. I put it there in case you wanted to. Are there any boards that didn't ratify tonight? Carl? Oh, that was gonna be my question. Did uh, did we all ratify? I mean, we, we ratified contingent on SU ratification. Um, but if I, I think the, the executive session is not needed if, if we've all ratified, right? Right, if everybody ratified. Did everybody ratify? Okay. Um, so then um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the WRVSU Support Staff Master Agreement 2021. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Yes, uh, this is done. I, we just aye. need. What, Don? I just think we need to clarify the voting members instead of everybody because I don't believe everybody's voting members. That's all. Mm -hmm. I was going to say this is probably something that we should do a roll call vote on. Okay. Yes. I agree. Let me see if I can get Do we need to amend the motion? Or not? No. Okay. We don't need to amend the motion. But all those, in, I'll call out the names. Um, Andrew Jones, are you a voting member? Yes. Are, and your vote? Aye. Um, Carl? I am a voting member and I vote aye. Um, Chantel. Yes, I'm a voting member and I vote aye as well. Don. Voting member and yes, I vote yes. Ethan Bowen. Uh, I'm a voting member and I vote yes. Lisa Floyd. I'm a voting member and I vote yes. 
Lisa McCrory. I am not a voting member. Megan Payne. I am a voting member. I vote yes. Mika Tucker. I'm a voting member. I vote yes. Michael Gray. I lost power and just barely got back. I don't know what we're voting on. Um, approving the uh, support staff agreement. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm a voting member and I vote yes. Bob Gray. I'm a voting member and I vote yes. Rodney. Uh, I think we, no, I'm not a voting member. I think that we got, did our three for Bethel Royalty. Okay. Um, Sarah? I'm a voting member and I, yeah. I think you missed Sam. Oh, oh sorry. Um, yep, Samantha Father. Voting member and I vote yes. Thank you. Also, Meg, teach out you didn't call. I thought I did. Meg? Uh, I vote yes. I'm here. I thought you were going by last name. I was just doing some alphabetizing in my head. <laughs> I'm going by the list of the uh, Yes. We have a long list tonight. Mm -hmm. um, Stacy Peters. Uh, yes and yes. Sue Kay. I'm a voting member and yes. Uh, Tina Pratt, are you a board member? No, oh, Tim he's Brown. public. Uh, Tracy Thompson, I don't recognize You got them all, Kathy. Okay, okay, I thought so. I didn't recognize that name. Okay, so everybody voted yes. So moved then. I'm going to vote yes. All right, support Kathy goes, she's done. Um, any other business? Hey, great work team. Uh, we have one executive session left. Move to the executive session for now. And I guess I need Tara in. And Rose, our lead accountant. Okay. Do I have a motion? Move to go into executive session for personnel issues. Second. All right, and we're inviting um, Rose and Tara in. All right. And that we accept the recommendation of the superintendent and business manager as related to payroll. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, I'll go through the list. Um, if you're, tell me if you're a voting member and your vote. Um, the top here, Andrew. Yes, and I. Carl. Yes, and I. Chantel. Yes, and I. Don. Yes, and yes. Ethan. Yes, and yes. Lisa? Yes and yes. Megan? Yes and yes. Megan Teachout? Oops, that was Megan Teachout just now. Okay, Megan, Megan Payne? Megan Payne, yes. Mika? Yes and I. Michael? Uh, yes, yes. Bob? Yes and no. Um, Rodney? Uh, no, I'm not. Oh, that's right. You told me. Okay. Sorry, I forgot, Rod. Samantha? Yes and I. Sarah? Yes and yes. Stacy? Yes, I. Okay, and I am also an I, so the eyes have it. Thanks, everyone. We'll get to work on that, and certainly we'll keep you updated as we are moving through that process now.
The next meeting date is Monday, February 22nd. Um, Don't we have an executive board on the 4th? There is going to be an executive oh. board meeting um, on February 4th. Busy couple weeks ahead. Full board in February, um, as the date Kathy said, to adopt the, um, hopefully approve the audit, in addition to the interview of the CAO. Perfect. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, guys. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much.